Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this basket out of this rope. Here's what you'll need. Shock horror, rope, hot glue gun and a pair of scissors. OK, we're all ready to go. Our hot glue gun is all warmed up. We're going to grab our rope and we're going to apply a small amount of glue and we're going to wrap the rope around, creating a small circle. This is going to be our starting point. It almost looks like a snail shell. And all you have to do now is just keep going until you've got 15 centimetres around from the base. The great thing about using a hot glue gun is it dries really fast and holds in place while you're wrapping around. The size of the basket is determined on the base. I'm going for a medium one. I've just got two more coils to do and then we're going to start building our basket up. I'm happy with the size of the base. Now it's time to start building up. To do this, we're going to glue on the outer edge of the base and just start building that rope where we just put the last outer circle. Just lining the rope on top of the outer edge of the base. OK, I'm happy with the height now. Now we're going to add some handles to our basket. To do this, we're just going to leave a little bit of a gap in our rope and then continue gluing around. I'm going to do that on both sides. Leaving another gap. Then when you reach to the other handle that you've made before, we're just going to cut off the end and glue it down. Just picking off any leftover dry glue and there we have it, your very own rope basket. My favourite type of art is either clay, painting or drawing. My favourite type of art is performance art. Probably drawing. My favourite type of art is like performing and photography and I like ceramics but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> my biggest arty disaster was when I broke both my arms and we were doing painting at school but I did it in my mouth with a paintbrush and I cracked my tooth. Oh, well, once I tried to do paper mache and it all just, like, crumbled. My biggest RT disaster would not be following the lines. Well, at school in drama, I um, forgot my script. So I had to, like, improv and everyone's around me was like, ah. <laughs> so... The weirdest art I've ever seen Probably be the ink ones where you use the ink ball things. Yeah. Well, once I saw a dress and it was made out of like a red carpet. The funniest art I've ever seen was at an art gallery and there were headphones that were painted with, like, they were covered in googly eyes. They were pretty cool. At school, we did a project on Picasso. So that was pretty, like, abstract and stuff. <laughs> Over the past few episodes, we created skulls and we dressed their heads and bodies. Now for the main star of this masterpiece, the face. So let's start with the eyes. So I'm just going to choose four really nice bright colours, two for each skull, and they're going to be the background of our eyes. I might start with green and we're just going to draw some weird kind of fun shapes. 
a jagged, spiky kind of shape, kind of like a star, but with lots and lots of sides. And here, I'll just do an oval, and then I'll do like a cloud sort of shape, and we'll do another spiky shape here. But you can do whatever you want. I've cut my shapes out for the background of the eye because we're all about layering when we do collages. I'm going to grab some dark grey or black card and we're just going to cut four ovals out and they're going to be the inside part of the eye. So ideally they should be smaller than those shapes, but don't worry if they're not. OK, so the next layer is the next part of the eye. We're going to add one more layer inside these eyes. A few little shapes. It makes them look a little bit sort of crazy. With the green eye, instead of doing another circle here, I think I'll do a spiral, but instead of drawing the outline, I'll just cut it. It's heaps easier. OK, eyes are complete. I'm just going to give our lady skeleton some really simple triangle earrings. Same process, just cutting out a shape and sticking it down. A triangle like that. And it's folded in half, so I'll cut that in half again to create a pair of earrings. And just position them on the side of the skull. I'm just sticking this basic shape down because I'm going to come back with a marker and draw some patterns inside. Tune in next time to Get Arty and we'll put the finishing touches on our magnificent collage. Hi, my name is Jonathan and I study game art and development at AIE. I make the art in the game, then someone makes it all nice and pretty. I guess it is different for everyone, but for me it'd be from the base idea, and you build up from there. You know, you get down to the drawing board, you know, write a few things down, maybe draw a few sketches, you know, you develop from there, you start making it, polish it, polish it, and eventually you'll come up with, you know, this is a solid idea. Uh, most challenging for game art development for me would have to be the time and the effort to put into it. It's very easy to lose motivation when working onto a project and you know especially if you're not being backed up, if you're all by yourself, you can lose the motivation and this project just gets thrown in the trash. Well it could have been you know the next big blockbuster. You never know if you don't just keep going at it. So definitely keeping the confidence and motivation to go with your project and to go through with it in the end. I find myself working in the best environment for me. Definitely have music playing. I need to have the headphones in, you know, just cool down and have them just blasting in my ears. Well, not blasting, but definitely there. And uh, definitely working with, um, with people around me in a group environment it definitely helps. Like, you know, oh, I'm just, you know, I can't handle it. I can't look at it anymore. I can just have, like, oh, you know, my friends next to me be like, don't worry, man, just keep going for it. I'll see their work and they'll de they're going at it too. I'm like, all right, I'll go at it, I'll do it. It's like, all right, okay, let's go, let's go. All right, I'll challenge you, let's race. But it's just so easy once you, once you realize, you know, how to do it. Like a lot of programs that you can just download at home, there's free trials, educational packages, and all what the real industry people use. Definitely, like, that's what surprised me. Just being how, how much freedom you can have and you don't have to pay a cent. <laughs> when I make a mistake, I just step away from the computer, breathe in, be like, okay, what did I do wrong? When I see it, it's like, oh, there it is. You know, just clear the mind, get to the zen mode, and then, okay, time to come back at it, attack it again, but this time better. <laughs> Uh, my advice to you guys would definitely be don't give up. Just if you've got the if you've got the dream, definitely go for it. Like not that nothing stop you, you know? Even if it doesn't work out too well at the start, just go for it. It's it's just it's just don't give up. That's that's my rule for you guys.
love summer so much. All the sunshine, the flowers, the beaches, but most of all, all the water balloon fights. They are so much fun. And it's given me an idea of what I'm going to make today. I call it exploding artwork. What you'll need is water balloons, string cut to different lengths, scissors, tape, a toothbrush, needles, acrylic paints. I've chosen some fluoro colours, water, a pop-top water bottle, and you'll need a canvas, an apron, and of course some drop cloths because it's going to get really messy. Let's get mixing. So we need two parts paint to one part water in your pop-top bottle. To take your lid off, squeeze your paint in. You'll need quite a lot of paint for this project. OK, now just pour your water in. The water bottle should act as a pressure hose, so you only need to fill it halfway. Put your lid back on and give it a really good shake. Perfect. Now just repeat with all your other colours. The next step is to fill your water balloons with the paint. Now, this step can be quite messy, so make sure you put your apron on and your drop cloth down. Pop your lid and place your balloon on the end. Make sure it's all the way around. Now, this is the messy part. Squeeze the paint into the balloon, pull it back, and then tie a knot in it. There we go. It's not too bad and fill five or six balloons of each colour. Oh. And sometimes they explode all over you. That's part of the fun of it. It's good to have a towel handy. It's bad, isn't it? Once you've finished filling all your balloons with paint, tie a string on to the end and we'll go and tape them all at different lengths to the canvas. Now you just want to make sure that your tape hooks over the back of the canvas and you stick it on nice and tight. And your canvas actually has to be upright for this, so I'm using an easel, but you can use your back fence so all the paint drips down. OK, now I'm really nervous. It's time to pop our balloons with our pin. And I don't know how it's going to turn out, but that's part of the fun, right? Now I pop them all, it's time to pull off your string, but be careful not to ruin your pattern. OK, now I'm very, very carefully going to add a few more drips just to the top of the canvas so it's fully covered. But just do a little bit at a time because you can't take it back. OK, that was really fun. But I'm just going to let it dry for a while and come back in a few hours and see what I can do. For now, I think I need to clean up. So I'm all fresh and clean and my canvas is nice and dry. But I've decided I want to add a few more splatter marks to give more of an exploding effect. So I've mixed up some orange paint with some water and I'm going to use a toothbrush and splatter it on.
Wow, that looks so amazing. Those flatters really added a different layer. You know what? It just goes to show that you can make a whole artwork without even touching a paintbrush. And just take a look under your easel. Chances are there's an awesome artwork there too. So this is Veronica. She wants a Halloween look but isn't a fan of masks. So what I'm gonna do is a spiderweb makeover. This is what you're gonna need. A range of art brushes, makeup brushes, a cup of water, colorful eyeshadows, shimmery eyeshadows, a range of face paints and glitter. So we're gonna start with a clean dry face and going on that is our background color, which is gonna be purple. Just close your eyes. And I'm studying that in the inner corner of the eye and going all over the eyelid. I've chosen purple, but you can use any colour you like. You can go over the area a few times and now I'm going to start dragging it through the eyebrow into a triangle shape all the way to the hairline. Straight across from the eye line and from the inner corner, just following the shape of the eyebrow and just going all the way up. And when you're happy with that, Move on to the other eye. Yep, I'm very happy with that shape of the two triangles. Next step is to grab a clean eyeshadow brush and just grab any shimmer eyeshadow that you like, place it all over where you had the purple because it will highlight the area. The next step is to get an art brush Dip that in a bit of water, grab your black paint and starting on the inner corner and just go straight up through the eyebrow, over the purple, all the way to the hairline. For my second line, I'm starting in the same point through the eyebrow again and to the hairline. I find it helpful for a steadier hand by resting my pinky on the face. For my third line, I'm going underneath the eyebrow. And for my fourth line, I'm just going straight down. So just open. Yep, and I'm happy with the placement, not going on the eyelid, as it would smudge when you open. So just take your time. I think I might do a few under the eye. One, two, three, lines. Cool. Joining them up, we're going to do semicircles in between the lines. Going through the eyebrow can be a bit tricky. You just want to brush through it as best as you can. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's get the glitter on. I'm just gonna go over all the black spider web so it shimmers in the sun. Spider web's finished. All we're gonna need now is the spider to go with it. I'm just gonna do a big circle for the body of the spider. Do a smaller one just below it for the head. I'm taking a finer brush to do some small detailing. Two little fangs at the front of the head. Do the same on the back, but do them a bit bigger. Now remember, a spider has eight legs. Leaving a little gap from the body and then having the leg bend backwards now I'm going to do two at the front. So around the nose area, 
can be a bit tricky. Just use a light hand and just go with the skin. We're almost finished. Let's just add some details to complete the look. A bit of red, so we have a red back. There. And with a really thin brush, grab some white face paint and you just want to place two dots for the eyes. Perfect. And there you go. When that dries, Veronica is ready for Halloween.